Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to, depending on wherever you may live or however you choose to read your clock, a middle of the night or early morning bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in. To this early morning or middle of the night bonus upload shall we all right folks tonight's or this morning's bonus upload there is an experience in here that when i first read it was just shocked uh i remember my jaw being agape and thinking how crazy this experience must have been not only for the five-year-old little boy, but the park ranger that was startled by that five-year-old little boy on a mountaintop. Today's first encounter. First, I'd like to keep my name confidential just for the fact that this happened on an Air Force base and I really don't know who will hear this. This happened sometime in September of 1999. I forgot the exact date. It was early in the month, though. Maybe 2, 3 a.m. I was a security force airman working third shift on base patrol. Now, mind you, this was an Air National Guard base that I worked on full-time. It's on the north side of Duluth, Minnesota, next to the International Airport. North to northeast is nothing but large wooded areas. Forest areas. Third shift on the base was pretty boring, 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. And us full-timers worked a skeleton crew, usually only five to six of us on the third shift. I was in the patrol truck doing my usual rounds, checking doors and fence lines. Late at night on the north side of the base was usually creepy enough when patrolling by yourself. Anyway, I was on this road driving towards the baseball field when my headlights caught a pair of eyes reflecting back at me. They were almost eye level with me. I was sitting in an F-150. Around this time, a few guys had been seeing this huge buck around the property, like a 16-pointer or something around that size. I was about 80 yards or so when I saw these eyes reflecting back at me. So I'm thinking, it's the big deer. I gotta see this thing. So I hit the gas and started speeding towards the field. This is where it all happened so fast. It's almost too hard to explain. There was a little slope behind the baseball field. It sloped down probably about 12 to 15 feet into the brush line. The brush went on to about 30 feet, then turned into thick tree line. The brush was probably armpit high to me and pretty tough, tough to traverse though, being so thick. As I turned into the baseball field and turned the truck towards this thing, I just caught the rear end of this thing leaping down the slope. Below the line of sight of my headlights, the thing was no more than 20 feet ahead of me when it leapt. All I got was the back end of this thing, and it was huge. The best I can do to describe it is say that it was wolf-slash-dog-like in nature. It had a long tail, longer than two feet. The hind legs looked exactly like that of a dog's. 
Same with the back paws, but the paws were huge. They were bigger than my hand, for sure. The hair slash fur was wavy yet matted and thick. The color was a blondish, very light brown. I didn't notice any gray, but it all happened within a two to three seconds. I sat in the patrol truck for a couple of seconds, confused and thinking, I know what I saw, but I couldn't have been what I saw. So I hopped out with my flashlight and an M16 rifle. I walked to the edge of the slope, and all I heard was this thing running through the woods in front of me, heading in the northwest direction. And this thing sounded like a moose charging through the trees. It made a lot of noise. That's when I started to get really scared, thinking, if this is some sort of wolf or whatever it could be, my M16 is not going to do anything to this animal. So I jumped back into the patrol truck as fast as I could and headed back to SF headquarters. I never talked to any of the other members about this for fear of ridicule, being labeled crazy, and losing my military pension. There's no way that I misidentified this thing either. I'm a trained observer, avid hunter, and I've worked with the animal rehabilitation with the Minnesota DNR in the past. I know animals and the Northwoods extremely well. I saw exactly what I saw. And that was the back end of a large wolf-like dog thing that basically had its eyes level with mine while I was sitting in the patrol truck. The back end was definitely much larger than the largest deer or black bear that I've seen. The points that I remember the best were its tail and its back paws, as well as the texture and color of its hair slash fur. That's my experience. I've never shared this with too many people except close friends and family in fear of being ridiculed, but I swear it is the truth. Today's second encounter. This happened back in the 80s when I was roughly 18, almost 19. Now I'm not a hunter, so I don't own a firearm, but I love the outdoors. I go hiking through the woods quite often. I don't want to give the exact location, but I live in Michigan. So I'm out in the woods with a friend of mine, just walking a trail and talking. We had been out most of the afternoon without incident, but then we were maybe an hour from getting back to the car and we both got this terrible feeling of dread and being watched. We decided to quicken our pace, but that didn't help. We could hear something paralleling us, maybe 20 yards out. We were worried about what kind of animal may parallel us like this. I guess we had been in a bit of panic or shock because we didn't notice that there was actually two animals paralleling us, one on either side. Once we noticed this, we were really starting to panic. So much so that my friend fell over and twisted his ankle. I was trying to pick him back up to his feet when his face turned white as a ghost. I knew instantly that something was behind me, so I turned around to see what it was. I'm not sure what I was expecting to see, maybe a bear or a coyote, but standing there, maybe 20 feet from us, was a Bigfoot. And it was huge, maybe 9 to 10 feet tall, at least a 1,000 pounds. I remember thinking that the stories I've been told about Bigfoot say that they don't really harm people. But this one, it looked evil, and it wanted to kill us both. This Bigfoot took a step towards us, and at this point I thought we were good as dead. Until out of nowhere this huge, dog-like creature got between us and the Bigfoot. I had completely forgotten about the other animal paralleling us until I had seen this dog-like creature. I guess the dog man wasn't as big as this Bigfoot, but it wasn't that much smaller, maybe eight feet. A lot slimmer build, but very muscular. When the dog man got between us and the Bigfoot, it stopped. Now the dog man turned its head and looked at us and gave us this grunt and then turned back to the Bigfoot. I took this as a warning to get gone as quick as I could. I got my friend to his feet and we got moving. There was a lot of growling and grunting going on behind us, the two creatures, but I think they were on their own ways without a fight because 
We didn't hear anything like that happen. Thankfully, there was only five minutes from the car, so we got back to it, unharmed, apart from my friend's ankle. I used to tell this experience to anyone who would listen, but almost everyone would say, Oh, you're making this up. There's no way you saw a Bigfoot and a Dogman. So I stopped sharing it. You know, that experience reminded me a lot of the time that I was up in Lily Pond Road. Uh, I had parked my vehicle, and that's where Tom Mezek had disappeared. <clears throat> and I walked out onto Lily Pond Trail, which runs deep into the Adirondack Woods. I was probably a good, I'd say, mile out from my car, just walking the trail. It was a beautiful day. I'll never forget this. Um, I got a weird feeling, just very strange, nothing ominous, nothing dreadful, just almost like it's time to go, you know, but nothing... Nothing was screaming danger, if that makes any sense. It was just time to go, I guess, you know. Uh, I turned around, and I started walking. And I probably probably got maybe, I don't know, 100 feet from where I had turned around. And at that point, I heard something walking behind me in the woods about 30 feet out and then I noticed on the other side of me there was something and they were almost uh, matching each other's steps that's why I didn't hear the second one um, eventually it did miss a couple steps and I caught it uh, thank God I have decent hearing and um, I kept walking. I was unarmed that day. And I was scared. I got right to where Lily Pond Trail connects to the opening of Lily Pond Road. I could see my car sitting right there. And I was like, oh God, I'm almost there, please. Um, here's another thing. Lily Pond Road is a trail as well <laughs> it's just wide enough to fit a car down it's almost a fire road uh, but lily pond trail is wide enough to fill a all-terrain vehicle um so i get to the edge of the trail and the road the road is also dirt I, it's just it's it's unbelievably just a poor maintained road um, I get there and I hear both turn around and walk back the way they came uh, I didn't run I was scared I wanted to I got to the back of my car threw my bag in and looked around quickly and left but it just reminded me of that because it was a really frightening experience you know so anyway let's get on to today's third experience and this one is very unusual i'm hunting for any information on a cryptid that i am not really familiar with to be honest i don't think it's been labeled yet there have been multiple sightings in my small town of Merle, Michigan, something of which does not match a single cryptid I have read about, and I've read quite a bit. I have personally not seen this thing, but I have three witnesses who I would bet my life on, and I really want to know what this thing is. The first witness is my uncle. He's the main reason I'm on this hunt. When he was young, he used to take night walks in the neighbor's woods. Right before sunrise, as long as it was dark enough so the neighbors wouldn't see him, he would take a very dim flashlight with him on purpose, and if he thought anyone saw him or was following him, he would put his hand over it and hide in the woods. 
He claims the main things that scared him were raccoons and possums. He never had problems with people on his walks, but he still knew the risk of trespassing. Although his story is not very exciting, he was the one that got the best view of this creature out of all three witnesses, claiming that it had legs that were bent backwards with large fly-like eyes, and the rest of it looked like a kangaroo and monkey hybrid. There are many cryptids that are close in visuals, but none of them have thick hair and big eyes like the one this did. I showed him drawings of other look-alike cryptids, and he dismissed them all. He claimed that he was walking out of the woods just as it was starting to get bright, and the sky was gray and the woods were still dark from the trees, but the road was almost visible down the whole mile. On his way across the road back to his house, he saw that thing a little ways down the road. It's said to have crossed the road in two steps despite being semi-short. It couldn't have been taller than five feet and disappearing into the woods my uncle had just exited. The second witness is deceased now. He is a natural conspiracist, so it came to no surprise when I heard this experience. Though his description is much less valuable, I have the belief that it is the same cryptid. A couple of miles away from the first incident, this man said that he saw a small, apish-like figure jump across the tops of the trees. This is the least resourceful sighting because I cannot ask him to answer anything he left out or give any more info. This is all I have for his sighting. The third is my grandmother's good friend Sylvia from a state away. Every 4th of July, they park a camper in my grandmother's yard and stay for a week or two to visit all of the friends and family they left behind when they moved out of state. Keep this in mind, these folks have never even heard of stories of creatures. And for this, I was in the house when it happened. Sylvia's husband had a few beers with my grandparents. There's a big tree on the side of a barely used road, and he walked over to it to relieve himself. As he was peeing on this tree, he noticed the same big black bug eyes that my uncle had seen. It was staring down from the tree line across the road, and as soon as he focused on it, this cryptid backed up into the brush and was gone. Me, my uncle, freaked out about this as you would because it had been six years or so since we knew someone had spotted this thing. As crazy as it sounds, me and my whole family believe and know in this creature. We've even narrowed down where it possibly calls home based on how far the sightings go. So you got three descriptions of what I think are three different cryptids. Um, maybe the first, the first one sounds like to me uh, a young dog man, very young. Uh, I'm not sure about the eyes. Maybe it was just a the distance from where it was. Who knows? The third kind of matches up with the eyes, right? But the second doesn't match up at all. It's an ape-like creature bouncing from limb to limb. So to me, it just doesn't feel like this is the same, you know, cryptid that is haunting this area. Uh, I think it's two Possibly, maybe even one more, but yeah. So, anyway, let's get on to the next encounter. I saw this huge dog like creature, a werewolf, if you'd like, back in 1987, when I was maybe five years old in Bulgaria in the Radopi Mountains. 
My grandmother was ill with cancer and she was at a sanatorium. So I tagged along with her and also her friend of hers that was also her doctor. One day after breakfast, we went for a walk like we usually did and we took a trail that led all the way to the top near the mountain. They were walking in front of me, talking and discussing whatever, and I was right behind them playing with a stick, just being a kid. After a while, they stopped, looked at the ground, and started lightly kicking at something. It turned out to be a dead snake. Then they told me not to grab it or even touch it because it could still bite me even if it's dead. We continued walking slowly. I poked the snake with my stick, thinking, how could it bite me when it's dead? And after, let's say, a minute, I decided to get another stick and throw it into the woods, away from the trail. That's what I did. I walked in the woods, and as soon as I threw it, I saw a big black thing running very fast through the woods. Fifty meters away, I stopped dumbfounded as to what this thing was, because it was running on its hind legs like a human, but it was far much taller. It had black fur all over, and it looked like an animal. I reached a conclusion that it must have been the cucker. That's a human dressed in a scary costume in Bulgaria to chase the evil spirits away. I decided to follow it for a bit and see where it went, and I ran the same direction it did. In no more than five minutes, I reached a small clearing in the woods like a small meadow, and I looked around for it for a bit, thinking to myself that I shall go back now anyway. At that moment, I realized that the whole forest was very unusually quiet, like the whole world was put on pause. I turned left to see where I had come from and go back that same way, but I saw something that got my attention. There were two red glowing lights, really low behind a bush and right behind this big tree. I stared at them for 10 to 15 seconds and realized that it was a huge head with glowing eyes staring directly back at me. I'm still thinking that it's the cucker, and it was hiding from me for some reason, so I said hey and raised my hand. Then this monster just got up, like, okay, you got me, and started walking towards me. Then I saw steam that was coming out of its mouth and snout. That's the first time I questioned my idea that this was a masked person. It smelled horrible, like wet dog carrion and vomit mixed. But that's not really what scared me. This thing was huge. Imagine a bodybuilder. Multiply that by five and three meters tall. You could see every single muscle on it. It had shaggy, nasty-looking hair, but pretty much no hair on its front side. When it got close to me, only a bush was standing between us. This creature spoke to me, asked me if I would like to help it pick berries with a calm and soothing voice. I was. It sounded kind of like a woman and not suitable for a creature that looked like this. At that point, I was frozen. So the only thing I could do was nod my head in agreement. Then for some reason, it told me to take my shoes and socks off and follow it. I did exactly that with one of my shoes and socks, but I changed my mind. When I put my foot on the ground in order to take the other one off, because I hate to this day walking barefoot, I started putting my sock back on. This thing got very mad at me for some reason. It growled at me loudly from behind the brush, lowered its head towards me, showing me its huge teeth. Its eyes lit up like they were red bulbs, and someone had increased the electricity. I took a step back and spoke to it for the first time after saying hi. I'll tell you to my grandmother, like a kid would say, but it replied immediately with how changed tone in its voice with small pauses between its words, no one will believe you. Like it wasn't used to talking at all. Then it grabbed me under my armpit and started running. I remember I couldn't breathe. The branches were hitting me in my face. I wanted to scream but couldn't. I thought I was going to die. I must have passed out because the next thing I remember was waking up on a rock and the first thing I saw was that I was not in the woods anymore, 
but 20 meters away from them. I wanted to run to my grandmother, but had no idea where I was. I stood up and looked around, telling myself that I'm not back to this forest. So I turned to check what was in the other direction, and I nearly crapped myself. This creature had taken me all the way up on a sheer rocky cliff 500 meters to the summit of the mountain, as I would learn later on. At that point, I sat down, broke down, and started crying. I prayed to God to see my family again. I remember looking at the valley below, and it was beautiful, but really far. The trees looked Lego-sized. Not long after, I heard sticks breaking in the forest, and my heart dropped, thinking that this creature had returned for me. So I tried to hide and looked invisible on that rock, but didn't have anywhere else to hide myself. So I stood there completely motionless, partially hidden by a small boulder. Then a person walked out from the woods, looking away from where I was, went to the edge of the cliff and stared, looking down in the valley with binoculars. So I was just sitting there, quite like a dead person, for a moment. I finally got some courage and stood up and began walking towards him. When he saw me for the first time, he was startled and pretty much fell backwards. I really scared this poor man that turned out to be a park ranger that decided to come to this spot and try to look down the valley for me because there was already an alert issued, but never expected to find a five-year-old all the way up on this cliff that you need special gear to climb. Started asking me questions, and I was scared, so I didn't talk. After a few attempts and no response from me, he took me to the park ranger's cabin to contact the others. I must have fallen asleep because I don't remember much after that. I remember me waking in the car on the back seat. It was dark and I heard my grandma's voice, so I s sat up and hugged her tightly. I refused to let her go. She too started asking me questions like, how did you disappear for 10 minutes? Did anyone take you? Who took you to the top of that cliff and where are your shoes? When I told her, she didn't believe me. Instead, she got very upset with me, telling me in a serious voice, that this is not the time for me to play games and make up wild stories about a big black wolf with glowing eyes. I think that was the first time I felt disappointed and remembered what this creature told me. No one would believe me. I started crying in frustration. I had so many feelings. So I sat in the back seat, hid under a blanket they had given me. Then the driver, that was quiet to this point, said, I'm born and raised on this mountain, and I've heard stories from my own grandmother that until this day I took as myth and silly legends. But listening to this boy that has never heard these stories that I heard growing up made my blood freeze and question everything I knew was real. I believe the boy. It got quiet for a while, and then my grandmother told me, I believe you too, but promise me not to speak about this ever again. I even forgot about it, but a few years back I was listening to something about unknown forest creatures and one of the stories was about a Michigan dog man and it just hit my memory like I got hit with a baseball bat. Broke the block I had put on my memory and everything started flooding back. Now this is what I constantly think about. Well, there you have it, folks. This early morning, middle of the night bonus upload, that last encounter. Like I said, that five-year-old little boy is hiding, terrified. That park ranger just startled when he eventually finds him. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. All right, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is your support, after all, that keeps the channel growing and going. And what gives people a chance to share their experiences and theories judgment-free? Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. 
that are out there and dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.